actual dress <laughs> what women actually wore during the day. Um, so it is in bad taste to receive your morning calls in an elaborate evening dress as it would be to attend a ball in your morning wrapper. So that is from the Ladies' Book of Etiquette and Manual, manual of Politeness. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll get into what each of these are. This is an evening, uh, evening gown, evening gown crossed with a walking outfit. Um, that's a morning wrapper, so kind of like the dressing gown we talked mm -hmm. about earlier. Um, and then that would be the walking outfit, but we'll get into each one of those. So dressing gown is what we showed earlier, so it was just meant to... You know, it was easy to slip on. It was something that the close, fa close family, close friends, you know, whoever happens to be in the house, this way you wore breakfast, um, and lounge around for a little bit in the morning, but for however long it took to do their beauty treatments, that's a whole other topic, because uh, that took forever. So, um, so around 1876, the dressing gown became the selected habits were at breakfast, uh, and then we'll get into the tea gown as well. Um, I just want to make sure I'm getting everything. So, uh, Queen Magazine of 1881, now known as Harper's Bazaar, um, says, It is so much the fashion for young ladies to meet in their rooms after they have seemingly retired to rest that, uh, that very smart dressing gowns are brought into requisition and flannel is forsaken for more dressing materials. So, these are some more examples of dressing gowns. So, again, this is kind of the Victorian sweatpants. So, uh, what they want to watch TV in or whatever. Um, now can, can I ask you another quick question? Yes. Would that dressing gown be worn only upstairs in the private part of the house? Typically. Not down, not downstairs at all. It, if probably you know family and close friends were, but probably upstairs. Just upstairs so, in the private. So just right. probably family, but maybe close friends. Depends on close friend is. Um, yeah. But yeah, probably upstairs. Okay. So the tea gown. This is one that she made, and I'm going to brag her up and down because she made this, um, and she hand sewed most of it as well. Um, not because her sewing machine broke, but <laughs> so, but uh, I was very proud of her. I gave her basically a picture of a tea gown, and she said, "Can I have this, this, and this?" Yep, and then she finished it. <laughs> so Amazing. the original gown was made that I copied from the picture was done originally from 1885, and it is currently held at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Fortunately, it's not on display; it's in archives somewhere hiding and. You can't actually go look at it right now. But there's a very it's beautiful so photo. I tried. There's a very beautiful <laughs> photograph of what they have of it um, yeah. that I went with. So yeah. So yeah. Now, as you can see, the reason why they put the shoes on before they put the corset on. I don't mm -hmm. know how easy it is for you to bend over, but to try. It doesn't. It doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. No. So that's why shoes were put on right after the underwear. So. Yeah, it's crazy. So she's getting that on. Um, so visitors are not expected until the late morning, because probably, again, it took forever to comb their hair, you know, put on lead makeup and whatever. Um, therefore, a woman can begin the day in a looser, more comfortable gown. So she should never receive morning callers in a wrapper unless they call it an unusually early hour or some unexpected demand upon her time uh, uh, makes it impossible to change for her after breakfast. Um, when you dress to receive visitors, you are expected to wear something nice. With a high long sleeves, very little jewelry, and there should be no cap or headdress worn. So, tea gowns took off in the 1870s. Um, so they went kind of off the rails. You've seen the movie Titanic, I'm watching historical movies. Uh, but you can see the very loose outfits that they wore in the movie. That's kind of where they got the idea is the tea gowns. So that's it was very comfortable. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can, I ask, can I ask what they were wearing to bed? Um, I didn't really get in. I didn't really research a lot of that, but usually sure. it was the chemise, yeah. the very the base the layer. Oh, yeah. 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 So, and there's very a lot of cotton. Yeah. Cotton nightgown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Very loose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, they're not wearing the night, this over the nightgown? It, it depended. If they used the chemise as their nightgown, you could probably on the poorer side, then yeah, that oh. was their nightgown. But um, I imagine the higher class, I don't know what you know about nightgowns back then, George, but. Oh, we have a few in the collection here. Oh, okay. And so, uh, they yeah. it, in this house, you would, of course, had separate pieces to sleep in. Yeah. And they actually had some, you know, decorative elements to it, lace and, and, and other things. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, th this is a higher social strata than, you know, right. you might in, in a more middle class home was. Yeah. Yeah, and it depended, too, on what social status you were, because that ranged everything. Um, so, yeah. Ooh, getting ahead of myself. Yeah, well... So yeah, there's that. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the crucial part of the tea gown is that you have to be able to put it on yourself. Mm. So everything was in the front, a lot of little hooks and eyes to cover everything. So 
because it's made supposed to be made out of super fine silk, the inside it was always constructed of something sturdier. Mm. So um, I've got muslin for the bodice, and then I've basically tacked my pretend silk over the top. <laughs> um, yeah, we were teaching things to each other back and forth as we were making the dresses. Did you <laughs> Did you know that? No. <laughs> So it, may I interject yeah. again? I don't want to keep, keep but yep. you know, um, it's still an involved process for you to put that dress on, yes. even though it's designed for you to put that dress on. Yes. I mean, I find that just amazing. I mean, you know, the idea of having a lady's maid to help you in certain out outfits because yeah. it's just, you can't do it by yourself yeah. is one thing. But here's something that's designed to be put on by the <laughs> woman herself, and, and yet so. it takes you, what? Five minutes, seven minutes, just yeah, to get all the buttons done? Minutes. I think that's just utterly amazing. I offer to help, but I guess I'm not supposed to. <laughs> well, uh, I and part of it is, is, like, we're working with, I don't, I don't usually do hooks and eyes, so. Yeah. And a couple of them were, like, super wonky when I sewed, after I sewed them on, <laughs> so then I was like, I'll just pinch them shut, and then I think I pinched them too far. <laughs> I was, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to put it together, I'm like. What did she do here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what I did was try to fix the hook and eye that I bent out of shape while sewing it. I wish I would have had a picture of the actual one she copied. I didn't even think of what it did. So I was thinking, I don't want them to compare. <laughs> but, but clearly, that's, I mean, that's quite an involved process. Yeah, well, I can't even see this one, so... Oh, I can imagine if you did it every day, though. Well, yes, you yeah. did it a little better. I mean, you're not wearing <laughs> the same dress every day, but that, that's yeah. a really good point, Cheryl. I mean, you're, 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 you know, practice makes perfect. But, but, wow. So, yeah, then you have... This is, I couldn't tell. Nowhere did it say if this belt was actually attached to the dress or if it was separate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, no. it's, I made it separate. Because <laughs> I could not tell what it was at all. Well, so far, you're still in on the back. <laughs> Here, so before I put it on, that's what you can see. So this one is a trained team now. Not all of them were, but often mm -hmm, they were. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so the upper layers stay the same all day, yep. and then it's just the shell that yep. changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we were discussing this too because we actually went out in public, like what last year? Last she, winter. Yeah, she had her I when I stayed in. <laughs> she, she had her Highland gown on, and then I had a uh, had all those underlayers on, um, and then a. Uh, Poor person's outfit. Um, but we were talking about it like there's no way they would have worn these all the time, all day, especially for the working class, because to be able to do the things they didn't want, laundry, cooking, everything, and that, it's yeah, it's just crazy. So I don't work. We we were just gnashing out loud. It had to have been fewer layers, but it probably depended on the day too. So. And for comparison purposes, we have a full maid's outfit in the servants' hall. Yep. So if you get a chance, please check that out. Yeah. Because um, oh. you know that's the opposite so end of the spectrum. So before I put this other layer on, I'll walk by so you can sort of see how it's sort of constructed before I cover up the whole back. Sure. <laughs> but that is so cool. So it's got like all kinds of like layering systems here. Oh wow! Wow. The, yeah. Did you do all yeah, this? Um, my cousin and I, yes, we <laughs> sewed on all of the flowers. Oh my gosh! Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, That's amazing. And where's the original? The Metropolitan. Metropolitan. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then that actually had a, um, the original had a, um, uh, a pink roll, but she, um, I gave her blue fabric because um, I just wanted to give a little bit of style, but she told me too that blue wasn't, blue and purple dyes weren't available really until like, well, you know, like richer, ordinary. richer people had them, mm -hmm. but right. not everybody mm -hmm. would. Yeah. So. So yeah, this was fun to see. I just love the whole thing. I wish I could dress like this every day. Not all the layers, but... <laughs> and again, this is an outerwear. There's something underneath it. Yeah. So this is not meant to wash frequently. Right, yeah. So I, that, that, I am probably never going to wash this dress because there's no way that these pleats will stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, for Victorian times, that was basically the goal. I, I, Thinking about it now, I was like, I wonder if they added extra layers so they wouldn't have to touch the pink silk. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, of course. Of course. Forget yeah. anywhere near it. So wash as little as possible. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, Israel, I think you're right. Calling it a shell is yeah. really you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> important. Yeah. So cool. Oh. Yeah. So the original color was like a peach. A peach. Yeah. Peach. So. 
Uh, it also so little, um, I don't know what you want to call them, sweat catchers or whatever, yeah. under yeah. the armpits. Yeah. yeah. And so then they could rip those out and put a new Re one in there, but yeah. keep the mm -hmm. yeah. little oh. shields. Yeah, little and shields. And where is the little tray or more of those to store away? Um, I think both, yeah. maybe. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Also silk. Huh? Also silk. Once yeah, it's supposed, yeah. Silk. well, it's supposed to be yeah. Yeah, silk in a set. But it's um. a cheater version, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, yeah. it's kind of... Yeah, it's super. This the robe would have been a little bit heavier weight than the dress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what women would have worn while they had tea, the morning visitors, mm -hmm. and their affairs. This is what their lover would probably see in the morning when they come over. Because uh, usually the husband would go off to work. And <laughs> 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 well, we're going to table you. what we eat. <laughs> so yeah, this was so the important thing about this is that the train is faced. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't want it dragging on the ground, right. yeah. Right. Where your ground is not always smooth, so the train of the robe and of the dress itself are both faced. Yep. And if you're not, and if you're supposed to cover your ankles, they probably went extra safe. And you know, mm -hmm. the petticoats I have, I'm not going to show it because yes. the bottom is completely dirty from that same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the so, trip that we made. So. And, and this is for afternoon wear. Yeah. This is morning. Oh, and afternoon. And after as long as okay. you're not going to have yeah. public. Because what I, th what I think is really back. interesting, under this lighting, and this lighting was so much better than candlelight or right. kerosene yeah. light, we lose so much of the detail in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That if you, you, you can see to the daylight, you could really appreciate it. You can see why it would be a, a daytime um, yeah. you know, you can't, you can't wear. Yeah, you can't see like the light. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's delicate. Fashion, it's really the, you know, the interplay of fashion and, and light. And then what age? Like 14, 16? Yeah. Well, it's a, I think that depended on um, women back then, too. Because, yeah, women were women were a lot younger, so as soon as they could take over household duties was when they were allowed to wear long skirts. Okay. Because um, up until then, there was a lot of different fashion things, because typically boys back then wore pink and girls wore blue. And somehow they got swapped. Um, but uh, it was just a lot of little things like that. So around 14, 15 was when they got the full guard, but they had, um, kids had kind of the same layers, basically, because girls were expected to wear corsets almost their entire lives, because um, it was meant to shape them. I don't know if that is sociologically, or, you know, that type of thing, too. So, um, the next outfit, I didn't know if you wanted to put it Yeah, I can put it on. Yeah. So, the next one is the visiting suit or the walking dress. So, this was when you went to go get your groceries, if you don't have a maid, or a servant, or whatever. <laughs> um, but this was meant to go out to other people's homes. So if you, so this had fabrics that were made of like yeah, this one you wouldn't leave your home, maybe your own garden, but you wouldn't like leave your yeah home. the tea gown yeah. Um, so yeah, this was um, so yeah, gloves and bonnet are worn with a visiting dress. A lady paying a visit may remove neither her shawl nor bonnet. Uh, so it implied that she intended to stay longer than was considered polite. <laughs> so um, and there was uh, we visited one uh, plantation down in. Um, New Orleans, and uh, they had one rule in particular if uh, they were staying, if someone was staying at someone's house for a particular, um, you know, particular amount of days, and the host got sick of them, they would leave an apple on their breakfast tray. <laughs> that was their signal for them to leave. Um, so, like the cold shoulder. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, okay. So it was also, very 1880s. Yes, so this era. is typically what you see when you think of 1880s. This has a lot of the gowns that you see in Gone with the Wind that are at the end of Gone with the Wind. Um, so this gown was intended for morning walk or carriage ride. It's meant to be seen and often elaborately decorated, but not as much as evening gowns. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, so this was made out of the heavier duty, heavier, heavy duty or fabric? <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Um, but it's the, you know, ones that fabrics are meant to stay up, stand up to wear and tear. Um, so rich and strong colors. Um, so yeah, these are all from 1883. When is the house decorated to? What year? 1882. Oh, 82. Okay, so this is just post when this mm -hmm. house was yeah. built. So yeah. this is perfectly, built. perfectly period. Yeah. So this is, if you can imagine Kitty and all, um, mm -hmm. all the women, this sure. is what they would have worn walking around this house in the afternoon. So those are all bustles? Yes. In, yep. Okay, so she's got a very small bustle compared to this. Um, yeah, and, yeah. The, and yes. I made the bustle to go with this tea, ca tea yeah. gown, and mm -hmm. what I could find on the Met's website said that this gown was worn with a very small pillow bustle. All right, okay. you could put a tea set on there. 
<laughs> yeah, that one, yeah, especially this one here, yeah. yeah that's very flat. But yeah, yeah, because with um, crinolines, the big bell gowns, you know, they couldn't get through, you know, door frames. That's, well, I don't know if that's why these were made so wide, but that's where they were made so wide back then. Um, oh, no. When ladies would go out on walks, would they like walk their dogs? Did they have dogs and pets? Or I it... haven't researched that, but um, I don't know what they would have done for dog walking. Was that more left to the maids and, or um, servants? I don't know. Picture them with their little tiny <laughs> squat dogs. <laughs> yeah, <I> love dogs. <laughs> Here, Henry didn't have a dog. He had a cat. Oh, so he, had he, he had a cat. Oh, so we didn't have we didn't have that problem here. Okay, okay. So I, don't know. I heard that we do know that for sure. It's in the newspapers. Oh, oh, it's oh it's it's they don't oh, name the cat, but the cat is the cat gets. I've seen the article. Wow. Yeah. Who knew? Okay. So, in my mind, something down here. So the way you Okay, so yeah, this one um, I actually wore to the last uh, event I volunteered at, so we're going to go over your head. <laughs> so this one I patterned after um, an 1880s um, uh, walking outfit, um, afternoon wear. I might cheat it, I use snaps, not some hooks and eyes. I can't see you. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. This one. Usually walking gowns, um, you can see a lot of these had underskirts. So what I did here was I put two ribbons here. The fabric pulled them down. Oh, got it. Okay. And then, uh, I can follow you on this one. Yep. And then cinch it up. So it was kind of a whole um, outfit uh, put together. So. Cool. I'm just trying to match what you did. <laughs> Yeah, and actually there's little teal dots in there, so if it looked confusing, why did you put teal ribbons on there? That's why. Oh, that's cool. This one's a lot of fun to wear, so. Yeah. So. All right. So, so, so sorry. Get into this so they can see this one. Yeah, and this one I didn't actually have a bustle cage for, so that one it really helped once I brought the skirt up and kind of made its own bustle, which was nice. So, can I, can I ask another quick yeah, question? Definitely. I mean, like the uh, the cage on the antebellum dress mm -hmm. or the cage on a bustle. How much does that weigh? Um, hmm. I think I've heard five pounds. I think. Okay. Um, so it's starting to add up here. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, how heavy do you feel? I mean, even this dress, if you just hold these two pieces, mm -hmm. this is, I mean, this is, how many how many yards of fabric did you give me? I think, because I didn't ask for a specific amount. I think five. Five, six, yeah. five, probably five of this and six of this. Yeah. And I used almost all of it. So how much do you think those two weigh on? So this is easily probably a couple pounds. Yeah. So now we're easily. And, and this is and this is light fabric. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad the dress fits you. Cause I made that dress to fit me. So yeah. <laughs> it's a little baggy, but yeah, but you get yeah. it. Yeah. So. But, uh, no, that one's a lot of fun to wear, actually. So. Cause, cause the reason I ask is, you know, one of the things that, in my crude sort of understanding of of the topic, one of the things that the corset did for you was kind of like the frame on a backpack. Yeah. Instead of having all that weight just hanging off your shoulders, the frame takes some of that weight. Yeah. And so the architecture here helps support the cage and everything right. else that you're wearing. And that's why is, is that, does yeah. that seem oh, true? Oh, that's, that's very true. Oh, yeah. okay. that's so there's that exact. functionality to it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's why, amazing. And that's why that cage, that, that was the first type of cage that was invented. It was because they had five petticoats underneath cool. and five of them I've never realized how this part went together. You always saw that sort of draping here. I didn't realize how that went together. How cool is that? <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. Okay, so actually I did not have time to make an evening gown, otherwise we'd be showcasing that one, but um, please give Alex a round of applause for it. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. Thank you. So these were, this was the dress that the peacock showed off. <laughs> this was the 
as, as much as fancy as you want to get. Yeah. What? I would just say pee hen. Yes. Yes. yes exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can see the younger lady. It was a little more flashy, a little more appetizing than uh, the mothers. You know, because they were already taken probably. Um, so it got as fancy wow. as they could get, and as much as they could afford. Um, so it ranged from silk, satin, all the fancy fabrics, um, and for, if you've read the Little House on the Prairie books, those poplin was the mm -hmm. extent of what they could get out there. Um, so this is another one, and this was a wedding dress, so that one. And I'm yeah. guessing those are much heavier in weight. Probably, yeah, <laughs> so, but you know, kind of, it looks like velvet. Yeah. yeah, can you imagine? I think that might that be That one is velvet. velvet. Yeah. Yeah, that one is definitely velvet. Yeah. So, but it had, you know, for the younger ladies, it had a little bit more breathing space with all the open neckline and uh, shorter sleeves.